Welcome to RV Story, the recap of what happened to you on this year's RV trip. Welcome. You're watching RV Story. I'm your host, Roger Matheson. Joining me tonight is Amy Magnuson our RV trip remote correspondent. How are we doing tonight, Amy? <laughs> That's great, Amy. This episode of RV Story intends to be a frank depiction of actual and reenacted events that occurred on the August 1st to 8th recreational vehicle trip. As such, parental supervision is advised as the gory and often cruel incidents that demand to be seen and heard will be presented tonight. We claim no liability for any mental or emotional trauma that any viewer experiences during RV story. So buckle your seatbelt, hold your breath, and say your prayers, because here comes RV story. No one knew what to expect on the first day, and it showed. No one was ready for a trip so real with such a high level of realism as the 2001 RV trip. Let's take a look at the preparations. Let's begin. Personal injury would be no stranger to the trip, as the first day would be quick to show. And Dame Fortune started out at the top, striking trip leader Mark Steffi. While preparing dinner that day, Steffi would get a bit overzealous with that carving knife. And, well, let's see this reenactment of what really happened. Hey, uh, you guys, why don't you go make the juice? I'm just going to be here cutting the hot dogs, okay? All right, cut, 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 all day long. Cut, 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 well I see, ah, ah, oh, oh, just cut so much fun. Somebody help me, somebody help me. As we saw here, Steffi was seriously injured, but was able somehow to recover and lead the remainder of the trip. Another drama that would play out that evening on a routine run for charcoal briquettes was the first in a long series of RV collisions. Susan Benequista, or Sue as we know her, was en route to a local supermarket near Rocky Gap State Park when a stop sign took her by surprise and almost caused a fatal accident. Let's see the reenactment. Oh, shit, I love it! <laughs> Ha 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 ha! 
No one was hurt except for the RV decrepit. And as far as the most popular guy on the trip goes, we all know who it was. Meet! RV trip correspondent Amy Magnuson takes us on a whirlwind tour of how Meat came to be the coolest mascot around. Amy? Thanks, Roger. The process begins here at Saffron Supermarket in downtown Swickley. Actually, the process begins in a Midwestern slaughterhouse where pigs are cleaned and packaged for distribution in the continental United States. But here at Saffron's is where the sexual chocolate RV found their mascot. This value pack of pork ribs, affectionately known as Meat. Meat went with the RV trip on a road voyage that spanned six states and over 1,200 miles and managed to stay intact throughout assaults by hungry animals and desperate flies. And now the meat that once sat on the re refrigerator aisle at Saffron's makes its home in a tree near Swickley's United Methodist Church. We were able to talk to Meat some weeks after the trip was over. Meat, how did you feel about the trip? Were you impressed by what you saw? Did you ever feel that you were in any sort of danger? Finally, what kind of advice would you give to other types of meat that may want to be mounted on the grill of an RV and travel thousands of miles while decaying from the engine's red-hot exhaust? Thank you for your time, Meat. Back to you, Roger. Thanks, Amy. Coming up next, day two. It seems that several of the participants were not ready for the severe amount of realism that they would experience during the trip. And on day two, the strain is showing. 
Here we are, day three. We're Cape Henlopen in Delaware. We're tired, hungry. You know, it looks like a lot of fun. Uh, everybody can say, oh, I can do that, I can do that, but you just don't know until you're out here. You know, it's very frustrating for me. Um, the There's just lack of communication from up above, from Mark. We get lost. I don't have any communication. No walkie-talkies, nothing. It's very frustrating to me, and uh, and you know that on top of the hunger and the lack of sleep, I just don't know how much more of this I can take. My name is Caraveza, and I'm 15, and I'm from Strictly, Pennsylvania. And today's date is I don't know. It's Friday. I don't know the date. And the best part so far has been today when we just sat on the beach and laid out because I like sleeping and that's what we got to do a lot. And the worst part was definitely, I'd say, like the first day when we did absolutely nothing and just drove in an RV and that, yeah, and got yelled at by Mark because I mooned people. It's not my fault. I mean, my button is nice, so I showed people it. We're just driving around endlessly. <laughs> There's all these random turns and like, we don't know where we're going. And it's like, stupid people like get on my nerves. And um, like we're driving through Baltimore and like there's all these people and like, they're staring at us and it's, it's so scary and uh, it's just, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know what to do and like, certain things just get on my nerves and Mark's just driving me insane, like we're driving around in circles, driving past the same thing. <sighs> so I'm a thousand times and I just, I just can't take it, I just can't take Mark, he's driving me insane. He's driving me. Perhaps the intensity of the RV trip was not fully anticipated by everyone involved, but as we were all soon to see, everyone got more than they bargained for. Fun in the sun, the good life, injury. All of these things which would soon be old friends to the participants on the RV trip made their presence known on day three. Let's see the film. I'm trying to tell you something about my life. Maybe give me insight between black and white. The best thing you ever done for me Used to help me take my life less seriously It's only life after all, yeah Well, darkness has a hunger that's insatiable And lightness has a call that's hard to hear And I wrap my fear around me like a blanket I sail my ship of safety till I sank it I'm crawling on your shores I went to the doctor I went to the mountains I looked to the children I drank from the fountains There's more than one answer to these questions Pointing me in a crooked line And the less I seek my source for some definitive Closer I am to find, yeah Closer I am to find, yeah And I went to see the doctor of philosophy With a poster of Rasputin and a beer down to his knee He never did marry or see a big great movie He graded my performance he said he could see through me I spent four years prostrate to the higher mind Got my paper and I was free I went to the doctor I went to the mountains I looked to the children I drank from the fountains There's more than one answer to these questions Pointing me in a crooked line And the 
Castle isn't the first guy to catch your eye when summer fashion breaks out on the beach. But Jeff had something special in mind that you couldn't help notice. Fellas, don't try this at home. Just good fun or a recipe for disaster? Trip leader Mark Steffi and co-leader Christy Leonardo, to the kids' delight, hurled them high in the air while at Cape Henlopen Beach. But this practice soon turned sour. Abby Riley landed improperly and suffered a sprained ankle. Briefly after the trip ended, Riley filed a lawsuit against Steffi, Leonardo, and St. Stephen's Church to the total damages of $1.2 million. In response to this action, Leonardo made a heartfelt plea for justice, which we were able to get on tape. Yeah, well, it started out as it was just a good time, and she wanted us to do it. In fact, she just kept talking about it. And so me and Mark just, you know, flipped her, and, like, we didn't think anything of it. But, like, I don't know. And she didn't even act that. She wasn't even that hurt. We saw her walk away and everything. But then, like, later when the lawyer called and I knew that we were going to go to court over it, I was like, I was like, are we talking about the same situation? You know, because, like... It was like she was describing something that totally wasn't true, and I wanted to just stand up and say, like, Abby, like, when were you a liar? Like, when did you turn into a liar? Because she's coming out of nowhere with this, and now we're going to go to jail, probably, and Mark's going to get fired. And, I mean, I told her, like, Abby, like, for you, this is just a good time, and, like, but, like, this is real life for us, for me, Todd, the leaders, like, parents... Like, this is, I mean, if she, I just want her to tell the truth. If she would just be good about this and tell the truth and tell the judge that she is okay, like, that would make me happy. In recent news, Abby Riley's lawsuit was successful, and now Mark Steffi and Christy Leonardo have been discharged from their jobs and permanently impacted <laughs> the prison. St. Stephen's Church continues on unimpeded, however, with a $5 million building project to be unveiled this coming January. And while on the topic of criminals, Nikki Kid Twist, it's a cone, a.k.a. Mike, the boy that RV trip participants befriended on day three at Cape Henlopen, was recently convicted of serial murder. It seems to Cone, who would assume the identity of a teenage boy on vacation with his family, would insinuate himself into traveling church groups at state-owned campgrounds and methodically proceed to slaughter each member in a gory sleigh fest. Thanks to the active leadership of Mark Steffi, though, the group was able to leave Henlopen safely. Sacon will be executed in the state of New Jersey this Monday. <laughs> Tragedy and triumph landed on day four, much like twin sisters wearing bonnets and licking their oversized lollipops. Becca Dominguez's face injury, as serious as it was at the time, could not monopolize the day. There was just too much happening.
skipping and a jumping in the misty morning fog with ah, our hearts that thumping and you, a brown eyed girl. Tragedy struck at 11.21 a.m. Saturday when Becca Dominguez took a bad fall off a wave runner piloted by Christy Leonardo. The group had just begun using the wave runners when this accident occurred, and though RV Story was unable to get footage of the event, we have reconstructed it through a careful reenactment. The role of Becca Dominguez will be played by Christy Leonardo, and the role of Christy Leonardo will be played by Nathan Holba. Christy, I'm a little nervous about this. Shut up, Becca. I'm trying to drive. Christy, I want to have a good time, but I don't want to go too fast. We might get hurt. Ah, you'll be fine. Besides, what if you do get hurt? At least I'll go down looking good. Christy, no. We're going too fast. Shut up. I know what I'm doing. I'm a professional. Shut up. Oh no, here comes a huge wave. We're gonna crash. Maybe we will. But at least you're going down with me. <laughs> ah! Dominguez received in excess of 15 stitches, but is fully recovered and is looking as good as ever. It is Leonardo, ironically, who looks bad. And celebrating his birthday on day four, Ian Ron. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Everyone joined together to wish him a happy birthday that evening. Ron was 19. And bringing a new name to terror was an unknown assailant who brutally harassed Ashley Hess, Caitlin Camisi, Brianna Gaudio, and Courtney Gumpf upon the group's arrival to Parvin State Park. Reporting live at Parvin is Amy Magnuson. Amy? Yes, Roger. I'm standing here on the main road to the restrooms at Parvin State Park, the site of a vicious attack by the man who has gone unknown to this day. Evidently, Hess, Camisi, Gaudio, and Gump were proceeding innocently to the bathroom to brush their teeth, take off their makeup, all the things a teenage girl does to prepare for bed where they were the victim of an unknown, perhaps mentally unstable, individual. Here's a reenactment of what happened that fateful night. Oh my gosh, guys, the bathroom is like so far. What? I think it's up here somewhere. Yeah, anyway, 
The rodeo? It's funny how all those cowboys are wearing like cowboy hats. Oh yeah, and they just with the roping, the, the cattle. You mean the steers. <laughs> They're called steers. <laughs> They're called doggies. I think I hear something up here. What? You see anything, Brianna? I'll go to the bathroom. Hey, where are you going? night, but this bizarre, isolated incident did little to assure the RV trip participants that they were in safe waters. Reporting live, Amy Magnuson. Thank you, Amy. Coming up next, the halfway point. Is the glass half full or half empty? What am I talking about? Stay tuned. <laughs> Summertime, love is in the air. But for some of our RV trip participants, crushes that seemed like passing fancies gave them more than they bargained for. Let's review the day. Crush tracking, our late-breaking special presentation on who's crushing on who. It was hard to keep a beat on Julia Sabulis, who seems to have crushes on lots of boys that she meets. You know what? This is what I want to know. Where the heck is John Sad? Why didn't he come on the RV trip? <laughs> yeah, why didn't he? Audie. Well, rumor has it that I have a little thing for Dylan, okay? I don't. Okay, well, I did until I found out he was only 13. But... Now I don't anymore because he's just too young, but he's definitely cute. But Dylan, all I have to say is call me in a few years when you're older. 741-8811. I'll be waiting for you. Okay, Videotape this guy because he looks like Kid Rock, I think. <laughs> Kid Rock. Has anyone ever told you that? Yeah, you look exactly like yeah. Everybody tells me I look like Kid Rock. Um... It remains a mystery as to how many multitudes of guys Julia truly has crushed on. The introduction of Dylan Dwinnell was another tough crush tracker. We've mentioned the tie-in with Julia. There was also some crushing from Sarah Tobias. <laughs> <laughs> <Stop>. <laughs> oh, 
But Sarah would go on to have a brief crush on Henry Hank Mundell. That would quickly dissolve as Hank proved somewhat annoying. Rumor even had it that there was a leader trooper relationship. The people in question clear things up. Word in the RVs is that me and Christy have a fling going on. It's not true. Last night in the RVs, Nate and Richard sang a song about it. It's called Abby and Christie's Forbidden Love. The dude's eight years older than me. 15 and 24, it doesn't work. Okay, like I've heard a lot of people spreading rumors about me and Abby like having like a relationship or something. And I wish people just wouldn't spread lies because they don't know the truth of the matter, which is like, you know, me and Abby met a long time ago, like in the 80s, like over the internet. And uh, we had talked about a relationship, but the main problem was that I was nine and Abby was one. And so we had a lot of different interests, like I was into Michael Jordan and Transformers and stuff. Whereas Abby was mostly into, uh, you know, spitting up and uh, breastfeeding. But like, you know, so we worked it out and we're, you know, we're good friends. And, um, well, actually, she just got a restraining order put on me. But, um, we still hang out, like, you know, well, mostly it's, like, I'll hang out 200 feet away from her house is, is a good distance. So, like, um, you know, we're still cool together, so. Although Richard Potter had something lined up. And I promised Richard if he made a song about me that I would go out with him, but he never made a song for me. He seemed to stick with what he had, the quiet, mysterious Nathan Jaunt. Candy canes. Some, sometimes I have to touch the butts. Sugar drops. Sound too obvious? You may want to see the following confessional that Jeff supplied us with one evening. Sometimes when I lay down at night at this camp and I'm laying next to Pat, I think to myself, why can't I be more like Pat? Why can't I have a big head like him? Why can't I be a JK like him? I mean, he gets all the ladies. I mean, he gets good grades. He's nice to his parents. I just. And Aaron Carter, I mean, he's just so hot. I mean, if you look at him right here. Right here, Aaron Carter. I wish I could. Hey, and just for fun, an RV trip crush quiz. Which of the following girls had a crush on Kyle O'Rourke? Was it A, Caitlin Camisi, B, Marissa Kuzma, or C, Julia Sabulas? The true answer? D. No one. No girl has ever had a crush on Kyle during this trip or at any other time. Sorry, Kyle. The last few days are a flurry of action. But between visits to Elk Neck Beach and Baltimore's Inner Harbor, we'll catch some intimate moments for the RV trip participants. It's on. <laughs> Take me out to the paradise city where the grass is green and the girls are pretty. Oh, won't you please take me home? Take me out to the paradise city where the grass is green and the girls are pretty. Oh, won't you please take me
Baltimore's Inner Harbor was an enjoyable oasis of urban life for the participants in the RV trip who had gone days without shopping or watching TV. Most of our footage from Baltimore was of girls trying on dresses, and it was summarily destroyed. Our remote correspondent Amy Magnuson is reporting live from Baltimore's Inner Harbor. Amy? Yes, Roger. I'm here by the I-495 interchange, where lost recreational vehicles drove futilely looking for the right way to go. Baltimore's Inner Harbor is regarded by and large as a huge tourist trap, where high-priced fashion conglomerates and Dave & Buster-esque adult playgrounds rule unopposed. To my right lies the Market District, where you pay way too much for CDs and clothes and got ripped off at the ESPN Zone. Outside of downtown Baltimore, the town has the highest crime rate per capita of all American cities. But luckily, you were pretty much spared from that on the trip. Roger? Thanks, Amy. Calamity. That's one word to describe what struck trip leader Mark Steffi's RV the night of day seven. Vehicles were traveling southbound on Route 301 when Mark's RV blew a tire, tearing a fuel line and destroying the sewage pipe. Tonight, we will play for you the actual radio footage that transpired during the emergency. Whoever's doing that, please stop. Hey, is the exit up ahead? Hey guys, uh, why am I peeing? We're going to be so late. Uh, to whoever is listening, there has been a major emergency. Repeat, major emergency. Mark, is that you? Yes, there are flames everywhere, everywhere, all around me. Mark, are you okay? Something has happened to the fuel line, and now well, now it's getting cold. Mark. Oh my gosh, my gosh. Please get help. I, I can't feel my back. I'm pulling off my lifeless hands. I'll call 911. Why do they call, Mark? Tell my wife that I love her. Luckily, no one was hurt and the trip went on with one less RV after Cruise America Incorporated retrieved the damaged RV. But this incident would not prove to be the last, as we will later see. Well, the last day is upon us, and the ordeal seems to have passed. But dying's a dirty business, and the real adventure may have just begun.
Once again, a mechanical mishap would plague the RV trip. In turn, April Gottschalk's RV blew a cylinder after a routine rest stop while the convoy was headed westbound on the Pennsylvania Turnpike. Once again, we have radio communication from the time of the incident. So I leave the bathroom. I'm feeling about 10 pounds lighter. Then who do I see but... Mark! I'm having some serious problems with my RV. There's some sort of red warning light. Whatever, April. So anyway, it's Wayne Newton himself wearing this. No, guys, I'm serious. Something is wrong here. I hear a weird sound, and there's a red light flashing here. Okay, that red light, April, is it flashing rapidly, or is it slow flash, like blink, blink, blink? What? In that red light, it could just be your turn signal. Now, did you accidentally touch the turn signal, or is it, like, flashing fast? Blinking? What are you talking about? Can I go with my story yet? Because April, you know, sometimes it's a flash, if the light's just blinking, like flashing, it doesn't mean anything. So you need to tell me what is the light doing? No, Mark, it's flashing. It's flashing. Okay, here's what we're going to do, guys. Everyone listen. We're going to wait about three exits. It's about 10 miles. And then at about, well, it's right now at 621. Again, no one was hurt. And by now, the RV trip participants were used to the frenzied unloading and reloading that accompanied leaving another RV behind. The trip continued in less than 15 minutes. Even after things had wound down and everyone had returned to their daily routine, there were still a few bones of contention, as we'll soon see in the following confessionals. Mark, now that we're back from this trip, I just want you to know, don't ever ask me to drive one of these freaking RV trips on another one of your freaking trips because I won't do it. These gosh darn kids and these cranky RVs, they just aren't going to do it anymore. If you need a parent for something, go call somebody else. Well, we're back here now at St. Stephen's, and uh, it was a long week. I had a great time, and I learned a lot of things on this trip. Um, I learned a lot about myself. I learned a lot about um, my ability to hold my bowels for a long time. Um, and I learned a lot about how bad Madison Ron stinks when he hasn't showered for three days. But the, the thing I learned the most is that on a trip like this, it's just, it's, uh, it's just not a good idea to bring a parent. I mean, I've gone on a lot of trips, and I've taken a lot of kids places, and they've given me a lot of problems. You know, whether it's sneaking out at night, or hooking up with boys and girls, stuff like that, but... Sue Benacquista, every night on this trip, next thing you know, you see her walking down the street to the local bar, and she would come back, and, uh, you know, just some of the words that she would use with the kids when she was that way, they, um, they were hurtful. She would say things that she would regret later, and uh, so I just have to say that uh, as a result this week, the thing I learned the most is that no parent from this church or from this community will ever come on another trip with us again. Well, that's all we have tonight for RV Story and for your RV trip. We hope that you enjoyed reliving these moments here with us as much as we enjoyed reporting on the strange yet beautiful events that went on that week at Play in the Fields of the Lord. My name is Roger Matheson. So long for now.
Hello, I'm Roger Matheson, and you're watching this year's edition of RV Story. We're going too fast! Shut up, Becca! I'm a professional! I know what I'm doing! Shut up! And now the latest breaking news on who's crushing on who.
but no one was ready for the second incident on Wednesday, in which the entire situation would repeat itself in gruesome symmetry. He's driving me insane. And for your RV trip, we hope that you enjoyed reliving these moments here with us as much as we enjoyed reporting on the strange yet beautiful events that went on that week at Play in the Fields of the Lord. My name is Roger Brenneman. No, it's not. Breaking news. My name is Roger Matheson. That's right. Roger Matheson. Toodly hoo. Well, that's all we have tonight for RV Story and for your RV trip. We hope that you enjoyed reliving these moments as much as we enjoyed reporting on the strange yet beautiful events that went on that week at Play in the Fields of the Lord. My name is Roger Matheson. So long for now. Okay, let's do one more. And just okay, how, how, do I, how do I work in this at Play in the Fields of the Lord stuff? Well, that's all we have tonight for RV Story and for your RV trip. We hope that you enjoyed reliving these moments here with us as much as we enjoyed reporting on them, on these strange yet beautiful events that went on that week at Play in the Fields of the Lord. My name is Roger Matheson. So long for now. You're so bitter. Okay, go ahead. Do one more. Just give it... Well, that's all we have tonight for RV Story and for your RV trip. We hope that you enjoyed reliving these moments here with us as much as we enjoyed reporting them. Reporting on the strange yet beautiful events that went on in that week at Play in the Fields of the Lord. My name is Roger Matheson. So long for now.